Alright, welcome in the morning guys. We've got Eva this morning with an Ivy. I will let Dave and Sash talk a little bit about what's in it and what they offer. Uh, Meg is going to be six weeks out from the Olympia. I'm six weeks out yesterday. Yeah, six weeks out. So this is the blood work for her six weeks out and my blood work pretty much four weeks into my off season. So we'll see how things are looking. Been using Dave since it actually started with the blood work. He's a uh, He's been a very helpful man in many, many ways for me. And when I've got an issue, anything that's health-wise, anything that's, uh, that requires some, uh, some higher knowledge, I'll always speak to Dave, I'll always ring him. And he's always got, uh, he's always got some great advice. And obviously we've got, uh, we've got the main lady here that, that runs the show behind the background. So we'll let Dave talk a little bit about what they do and how. So, David, let's go. It's too early for this. Um, it is very early. IV wise, that's uh, five milligrams TB, five milligrams BPC, and twenty four hundred glutathione as an information overall information management sort of IV. Uh, blood wise, do a full range of blood tests, um, starting from testosterone only, right through to our top package, which is. You just put an Instagram post on about it, haven't you? With all yeah, the we, ones we that you have just had on. an IG yeah, post sure. on with yeah. various tests and prices. Uh, we do do IVs um, and we do uh, clinics in several gyms up and down the country. We have clinics ranging from Fife down to Plymouth, Cornwall, Bournemouth, um, Suffolk, Essex, uh, Norfolk, Bradford, Huddersfield is the main one, mm. Birmingham, Ilkston, oh, Derby, Hereford, Northampton. South Wales, North Wales, um, so quite a few. Basically, anyway, you'll find, <laughs> it. You'll find We're it. getting there, we're getting there. Right. Um, and we, we specialise in supporting people within the fitness industry. Yeah, that's the biggest difference. I think a lot of the clients, a lot of clients generally uh, generally do the fingerprint test as well, which I don't think is quite as accurate. It's well, not actually, lobotomy. it's not, but as Dave has mentioned, if you milk the finger rather than just squishing it at the end, it actually makes it a little bit more accurate. The problem is, if people aren't using Eva and using other services, they'll not tell them to do that. 100%. So that's uh, that's the biggest issue. Now, you will have a link in the description for Eva to get in touch and get the blood work done. Now, they are ultra of them, end of every month as well. So you can always get your blood done and get the full MOT like we do on a regular basis. So look after your health. That'll be the start of the video for today. Let's get it. Right, so I want to show you a little bit of my morning routine. So as soon as I wake up, I get straight in my office. I put the, all of the lights on. I've got my red light therapy and I do have my Lumi light. Um, and then I get stuck straight into my client work. So generally, every single day, there will be some client work. The big days are always Monday to Friday. Saturday, Sunday are always slightly smaller days. And they're the days that generally I do Q and A's, lectures, uh, and I do some more lectures for the NK Excellence program on Thursdays as well. So that is something that we actually do. Uh, now, generally, I do think the more efficient you are of your time and the better your routine, the more work you can get done. And that is something I definitely pride myself in is uh, the service that we deliver uh, both within our coaching and within our mentorship. So that's my uh, little office setup with the cozy light. Uh, I've got some of my favourite pictures. Got a picture from Mark there. We've got some of my favourite shots of my bodybuilders. Uh, for a little bit of inspiration, and this is the magic happens uh, for work. Uh, I do spend quite a lot of time here, and I like my space. I like my workspace. It allows me to focus. No distractions, which is key. So I'm gonna get some work done now. I've got two clients competing today. One tomorrow. Two next week. I just had a client compete in America. Narrowly missing out on his pro card. Second being a class of 25 at North Americans in men's physique. So gutted, but happy for him in second way because never really been in shape until me. So win-win. Right, let's get the day started. Let's get it. Let's go, baby. Six weeks out.
So, this is Meg's daily check-in with me, uh, six weeks out from the Olympia. And condition-wise, we are definitely ahead. And we're definitely ahead in terms of physique development, especially her lower body. As you can see, the quads and glutes have come up a lot. Before we front shot again and power pose, please. Now, she has been pretty much in our prep all year, so she's uh, ready for a little bit of downtime after the Olympia. But as you can see here, the improvements are huge, especially pretty much bringing in a, a better physique, tighter midsection, more shape and flow. How are we feeling? That face is coming in already. Beautiful. We know what to do, we just don't have it. Just uh, need a bit of a... And we may need a bit of an instructor, so he says he'll pop me out for a few days. And... Right, so, blood pressure time, guys. We have got my reading for this morning, which is 113 over 52 and 66 pulse. And then we have got blood glucose, 4.4. So all the health metrics are looking pretty bang on. Now look after your health and make sure you stay on top of this stuff. Free stuff you can check at home. Welcome, good morning, that's the morning starter. So we've got my meals getting ready. Now I'm gonna show you a full day of eating today because it's a little bit different because I've changed, I've swapped my meal one around with meal three. Um, because I've really been fancying something sweet before I train. So meal one is actually going to be eggs, rice, venison this morning, which venison and chicken if anything, the venison steak that we actually get is leaner than the chicken. So you are gonna to get to see the same macros, but a little bit different. So as Meg would say, same, same. Pretty far. Yeah. So I actually preset my rice cooker last night, so it was ready for the morning. So generally just press menu, preset, and I press like seven hours, so it was ready for this morning. Um, now I've got my meal one rice, meal five rice, meal two rice, because I actually have rice or meal two as well as potatoes. So generally when I wake up first thing in the morning, I like to get all my bits ready so that I can just crack on my day, get work done, and everything's so much more efficient that way as well. Um, so take you on the day. I'm gonna do a pose now. I'm gonna look at Meg pose. She's just under six weeks out now. Uh, she had a high day yesterday. And then morning walk, more work, team call. And what else we got? Training. Yeah, leg day. So. And realistically, if the blood pressure is looking like this at 250, it's definitely a promising sign, um, especially with pulse being quite as low and blood sugar being in a great spot. So I've got scope to definitely push to 280 and above this year. So that's going to be the goal. But key will be managing blood pressure and making sure that stellar health stays on point. Good morning. Please remember to get your Q&As in for today's team call at quarter past 10. Uh, some epic questions already, so I'm looking forward to covering it all. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. So make sure you put your name down as well, uh, just so I know who's asking the question, in case we need any follow-ups as well. So see you guys soon, and I hope you all have had a wonderful weekend so far, and will have a wonderful weekend for the reminder of it. Right, that's a check-in with the lady done. She's looking on point. She had a high day yesterday. Uh, definitely come back to life a little bit more today, but it's time to get back to work. Um, today, I'm actually going to get her to do less steps, just crack on my usual diet and train legs. And that'll definitely do the job. I think now at, she's a definite at a point where she's definitely further ahead of where she's been before this year with condition. So we're on track to be pretty much ready at 10 days out fully. So it's given us about four weeks of fat loss, which for now, with where she's at, it's literally a perfect place. So Lumi lights are going to go off now.
I've got my uh, little red light therapy light as well. I'll put it back on later on. I've got six minutes left, so I need to not miss out on it. Uh, now, morning walk time and then meal number one. It's 10 to seven. So generally, I always aim to have my meal one about 20 past seven. Uh, wake up time, half past five, uh, latest uh, on the days where things are busier. Sometimes the line will be like 10 to six, but that's about it. Uh, but the routine always stays the same. And that's the routine that I genuinely enjoy and are thriving. So I'm not ever going to be the guy that says, you have to have a routine like me. Um, I will always be the guy that says, work out a routine that allows you to be efficient and allows you to feel good, but more importantly, keep on top of your work, which is extremely important if you have goals as a bodybuilder and in any endeavor that you wish to embark upon. Let's get it. So morning power walk is going down. No direct cardio at the moment, but my morning walk is vigorous, as I would like to say. <laughs> now, at the moment, my fitness levels are stupidly, stupidly high. Some of my work in the gym is still higher up, which definitely improves your cardiovascular capacity. Now, secondly, I am quite active and I do take a few walks per day. So for now, no cardio, just a strong power walk every single morning. I will add cardio when it's needed, but for now, simply isn't. So again, just another tool that is to be used when needed, not just for the sake of it. Right, down. Right, back home, back in the kitchen, and meal one is going to go down. So a little bit of a different meal today. Um, I'm looking forward to showing it to you. And to be honest, I don't know why, but I've really been craving it. So uh, I'm craving it. How weird is it to crave just the same shit you eat with just a variation of it? Uh, now, for some reason, when I structure my diet, if I have whey and cream of rice more than twice per day, I feel like I'm cheating on my diet. So that's why I've opted for this variation this morning and sweet before and after I train because that's what I want. So no rules to it. As long as you stick to the setup you have with your macros, that's the main most important thing. And again, the quality of the macronutrients needs to remain high. So this is not if it fits your macros, this is more so swapping like for like food sources of the same quality, which is good. Now, if you swap something that's of lesser quality, then it's not good. Here we go, meal number one. We've got 110 grams of rice. We've got 50 grams of mushrooms, 30 grams of peppers, three whole eggs. We've got my egg white omelet. And then we have got extremely lean venison here. So that venison will actually go into this. Then I will top my rice with eggs. You'll see the finished product shortly. This is a, a tremendous meal one. Right, my guys, so this is the final product. We've got three whole eggs, 150 mils of egg whites, 100 grams of veggies, 125 grams of venison steak, 110 grams of rice, and then we do have 130 grams of blueberries. Uh, 130 because I have 20 grams from this with my pre-workout meal. So I'm going to sit down and enjoy this meal and get this down before I get rest of my bitch ready for the morning. Now, generally I eat meal one, then I get my stuff ready for a post-workout and some of my intras. So you'll get to see that as well. And I will show you what I have before this meal as well. So a lot of you already know how big I am on digestion. And I always say you can only eat what you can, you can, only eat what you can digest. So Digest Pharma Pro goes down before meal one, alongside of a couple of caps of Ensure. Now, this has been incredible for digestion. Um, I will literally have that meal. And yes, I'm still pretty damn hungry. 10, 10, 10 week post show. Uh, I could probably, probably eat all my meals twice over, but I genuinely eat that meal. And then an hour after I could literally eat another. My stomach's pretty empty. So definitely massive value in additions of these as food starts to climb up and as food gets higher. So you're missing out if you're not using them big time. Um, I'll show you some of my other health subs as well. And some of my other subs that I use uh, for pre-intra and post-workout. So let's get it.
part one of breakfast done. Omelette goes down first. And then, honestly, this venison is absolutely amazing. Now, 180 degrees for six minutes, and it's literally ideal. Now, we actually buy venison steaks and we miss them ourselves, which makes it an extremely lean piece like this. Honestly, this breakfast is actually delicious. I'm not going to lie. Probably one of my favorite breakfasts yet. When food goes up and I can add some sourdough bread to this, it will literally be 10 out of 10. I just want to show you this and how good it looks. Beautiful. Right. So part two. Now the breakfast is done. I am going to get my post-workout meal ready and Meg's post-workout meal, which is 150 cream of rice for me and 110 cream of rice for Meg. Now, that is pretty much the morning routine for me always. I always eat meal one and then straight after meal one, I tend to get up, do a little bit of movement, which is great for digestion, but also keeps me a good routine. Getting some of the bits that I like to get ready. Well, I like to, I have to get ready. And then Meg's breakfast actually is almost done. So you will actually get to see that as well, which is going to be egg white omelet, one whole egg, 100 grams of sourdough, and 100 grams of blueberries that are already on the table. Now, key to getting your omelet right is warming up your pan first onto high heat. And then once it's warmed up onto high heat, you've got to turn it down and then just let it, let it settle. And then uh, the sourdough bread is actually better done in the air fryer rather than uh, rather than actual toaster. As you can see, because we have got already quite a few appliances, we don't actually have a toaster. And the main reason for that is, just don't think we need one. Now, a little bit of salt, it's already weighed out. And then seasonings wise, we actually use dash seasoning, which doesn't have any additional sodium which means we can actually control our sodium intake, both in prep and off season. I think sometimes people forget how much salt there actually is in just normal condiments, and then they actually over consume sodium intake, which then leads to massive body weight fluctuations. And then you see clients checking in and they're always like, I don't know what I've done. I don't know why my body weight is, body weight is up so much. Generally, it's just down to miscalculation of sodium and water intake. So. More consistency you can have, the better, and less fluctuation you'll see. So that's going to be the meal one. Now, my pre-intra and post, I will show you as well. So first, get this finished off. Now, one thing that most people definitely undervalue is hydration. When I first wake up, I pretty much have around a litre and a half of water within the first... 90 minutes of me being awake. Now, not only allows me to hydrate, but it also allows me to be consistent and efficient with getting my water in for the day. Most people don't drink enough up on wake, leaving themselves pretty much dehydrated for the remainder of the day. Now, this is my post-workout protein portion. We've got 400 grams of prawns, 30 grams of kimchi. Now, fermented foods, amazing for gut health. Um, I have had to run a course of antibiotics lately, which definitely impacts your digestion a lot. So I have been implementing more digestive enzymes, probiotics and prebiotics, and fermented foods are always the best for that. So how much should you take in? I would probably say 50 grams per day is more than enough. Um, one thing you have to be wary of is just not taking in too much fiber, because fiber is good, yes, but all within moderation. If you're taking too much fiber, it will actually block you up a little bit. Now, sources wise, I've got Flavor Gang, uh, Sweet Pappy, which is extremely low calorie, but tastes amazing. But I do weigh that as well. So I have 15 grams of sauce, my meal one. I have 15 grams of sauce in meal two and 15 grams of sauce in my meal five. Um, that's my pretty much allowance for sauces, which comes up to like 15, 20 calories per day. 
uh, which is nothing really, but definitely adds a lot of flavor to the food. So that's that done. Microwave, cream of rice going back in. And then I will show you my pre, intro and post. In a right, so pre and intra workout nutrition. I've got my pumpage that will go in with creatine and glutamine. Now, I generally like to have 400 mils of water with this because again, if you are taking a pump formula, you have to make sure that you're actually taking adequate water to be able to get the pump benefits that it brings. If you are slightly dehydrated, it will also have an impact um, on your ability to get a pump. So when you do use a pump formula, make sure that you actually use ample water with it. Now, 20 grams of pumpage goes in my pre um, with, again, code Kuba10 for your discount at Train by JP. And then what I actually do as well is I have five grams additional in my intro workout. One, tastes good. Two, you can always, always benefit from a bit more of a pump. So five grams goes into this. And that definitely does the job for the pre-workout and the intro. Now, intro workout carbs, 30 grams of performance fuel, which is our pure cyclic dextrin. This one is actually flavored with stevia and it's pina, pina colada flavor, which is not only tremendous in taste, but when it comes to digestibility and efficiency with how your body digests this, it's tremendous because stevia is actually much easier on the gut. The sucralose for most people. So if you are having troubles with any carb powders, it's not down to actual carbohydrates itself. It's more so down to the additional sweetness that they add and one thing that most of you probably don't know is that the same issue happens with whey. Majority of people think they have issues with whey. That's just not the case. Generally, the issues that people have is not the whey itself. It will always, always come from the sweetness and additions that they actually add to it. Um, fillers, a lot of companies that actually sell some of the concentrates, I'm not going to name names, but... If you get diarrhea from it, you'll probably know which company I'm talking about. Um, generally, if they add fillers to it, they will always, always make it taste better. But when it comes to digestibility, it makes it much worse. So we've got 20 grams of pumpage, 5 grams of creatine, 5 grams of glutamine, 30 grams of performance fuel, 5 grams of creatine, 5 grams of glutamine into my intro workout. And then we have got my MPS Max, which is my protein serving for my intro workout. That will actually go in with 250 mils of water in my little bottle that I've already got prepared for this. So that is my pre and intro workout nutrition from Train by JP. Discount code Kuba10, you know the drill. Now creatine, massive benefits when it comes to training performance, hydration, um, glutamine, gut health. And another reason why I love creatine so much as well it's actually an amazing nootropic. So it's a massive win-win utilizing these products. When it comes to not just training performance, but when it comes to gut health with the glutamine and when it comes to hydration, because it does aid in hydration, which is something that most people undervalue when it comes to digestion and gut health in general and general well-being as well. Uh, most people are just genuinely dehydrated it's not that they've got certain issues it's just lack of salt lack of minerals and lack of water so take note and make sure that you don't skimp on your water intake so that's part one of my routine i'm going to finish off post workouts now and then time to get back to work Right, so that's my post workout ready. Now, if you want your cream of rice to look like this, add a little bit more water to it and simply over boil it in the microwave. Uh, just don't let it spill and make sure you've got a high enough bowl to be able to do that. So this is 150 cream of rice and I actually put about 500 mils of water in it. So it's consistency wise, it's pretty thick, but don't really want to volumize it too much post workout because you do want the food to be going in without too much bloating. So that's my post workout meal done. We've got chocolate banana, um, which is divine with a mixture of custard and it goes 
pretty amazingly together like this. So over boil it and then put it in fridge and it sets perfectly. I actually put Megs in the freezer and then I put it in microwave after and it gives even better texture after. So try it out. Right, back in the office. Now, back to work and back to client replies and check-ins. Now, my main check-ins run Monday to Friday, but I pretty much have clients compete every single weekend now, um, pretty much running until the Olympia and after. So I like to structure the big check-ins Monday to Friday because then it gives me the weekend to focus on the guys that are competing and it allows me to have more time to do client Q&As uh, and lectures for my mentorship with MK Excellence program and uh, Q&As for my actual team. Now I've got a Q&A today planned at quarter past 10 for the team. Uh, some epic questions, a couple of covering the rebound, which is an interesting one because one factor people often forget when it comes to rebounding, and this is where I see a lot of people make the mistake of doing so, is it's not actual muscle that I actually gain post-show initially. It's a lot of body fat, and there's two different types of hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic and myofibrillia. 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 Uh, I'm trying to get more words out here, but anyway, uh, you can look it up. There's two different types of hypertrophy, right? Um, and generally, the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, that is just generally water and swelling, cell swelling, which does have some benefits. However, it's not actual temporary. Um, it's just swelling, and then it kind of subsides after that initial post-show rebound period. Uh, and this is where a lot of people just get soft pretty quick and lose uh, the gains that they think they had when they next diet. So in order to actually get the, the solid muscle mass that's dense and the muscle mass that hangs around, unfortunately, it takes time. I think people often look for the secret. Um, they want to do things quickly and fast, uh, especially post-show. And the reality of that is if you rush your post-show phase, you just ruin your off-season for the entirety. You'll get there quickly, but then you just don't make no progress. Uh, and again, once you get there quickly, the likelihood of the gains that you've made being actual muscle tissue are very, very slim because building muscle takes time, especially when you want to build the solid, dense tissue. So that's just a note from me. Now, I'm going to get back to my clients now. I do have quite a few clients that I've checked in today that are competing. Uh, but again, that's just the mini check-ins that I do pretty much with most of them daily now. Uh, but the main, main work is always saved Monday to Fridays, uh, which is the big check-ins, the main check-ins that I always do. Now, I work off Google Sheets. I don't work off uh, any apps. My preference, I think there's a lot more detail that I can actually gather on Google Sheets rather than an app, uh, unless I can look into an app that allows me to have the same data collection uh, as my Google Sheets do. So that's just a note from me, but I'm going to... Get back to my clients now, then do my own checking. I've taken my pictures this morning. Then I've got my feedback to fill in for myself and Dean. Um, I am working with Dean McKillop, and it's definitely been very helpful having someone in my corner. Uh, it takes a lot of stress away from me, uh, especially being as busy as I am with coaching at the moment. Um, having a lot of guys competing at the Olympia and at a very high level, it takes some pre stress and pressure off me having Dean um, to work alongside of me and obviously Meg as well. So definitely massive benefits to that. I think a lot of coaches at the moment, and I've had this happen, actually a conversation I had with Jordan, is a lot of coaches almost want to self-coach, like I have them the past couple of years, um, as a way to promote the business. And I think that's probably the worst thing they can do. I've been able to do that last two years because I've been coaching um, for the past 12 years and I have been coached pretty much on and off for the past 10 years. Uh, and mainly that was with Jordan. Now, I've been having numerous consult calls. I always have input from other people and I always seek help and I always try to look for ways of coaching uh, and further educate myself. And I think people that want to self-coach as, as a way to promote the business probably does the opposite because they actually start to make less progress. And now I wanted to do it myself uh, this past off season and prep just to be able to show that I can do it. Um, would it, been, would it have been more beneficial having Dean on board or someone like Dean or even letting Meg take the shots? Uh, absolutely, it would have been. However, it's something I wanted to do for myself um, just to be able to say I can do it. It's just a bit of an ego thing.
I think. Uh, but anyway, back to work and then I'll show you the remainder of the day. Right, so that is a wrap up. I have done my check-in and client check-ins. Yeah, uh, Q&A is all ready with some epic questions that I will be covering at quarter past 10. So I'm going to go downstairs now, get meal two ready, eat meal two, and then do the Q&A. And hopefully I'll get time for a little bit of downtime. I do every day try to have like 15, 20 minutes just laying down, no phones, no distraction. Um, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's meditation. It's more so letting my mind rest and the body. Uh, something that Charles Marden, one of my mentors, has been kind enough to share with me. And it's been a massive game changer for productivity and general recovery. So... You've got to make sure that when it comes to recovery and recovery modalities, you do things to allow this to recover and your physique. They both work hand in hand. Remember that. A little bit of a uh, sneak peek on the legs at uh, 10 weeks post-show. I think uh, we're doing good. It's uh, definitely been a productive one. The glutes are still in. 250. Never looked this good. Happy days. I think condition-wise, I'm uh, better now at 250 and I was at like 240 coming down. So happy. Right, meal two, part one. We've got my 400 grams of potatoes, which are getting seared on the pan before we get into the actual air fryer. Now we've got our steak venison, which is extremely lean. As you can see, there's no fat there. Make has trimmed it. Have again. Yeah, normally mum does it, but Meg's wanted to do the job today because it needed doing content. So, meal number two is about to go down. Let's get it. Right, here we go. Meal number two. We've got 400 grams of potato, 25 grams of raw wheat rice, 250 grams of venison, again, the steaks, and then we've got 100 grams of pineapple. Now, it is 9.48. I generally have meal two at 9.45, so we're running a few minutes late. I'm going to eat this now, and then it's going to be time to get a few more bits ready, and then time for the team call. Now, one thing I try and always make a point of is eating in a relaxed environment, and actually eating sitting up. Um, your digestion will always be better. A lot of people sit down or lay down, or like get in weird positions on the sofa to try and eat, and that's the people I always see with a lot of distension and digestive issues. So one advice from me, eat sitting upright, keep your posture, and then take a little bit of movement after your meals as well. Definitely helps with digestion. So I'm gonna get down and stuck into this meal. I'm actually pretty damn hungry now, so time to eat. Pretty, pretty quick, where they actually start to lose body weight pretty much rapidly and actually start to recomp. So my plan of action in this case would be setting a, a new level of maintenance for him, setting up a structure with the diet where he can actually adhere to it. And if he can't adhere to even maintenance calories, you may even need to put him in a slight surplus, even though he's up 30 pounds, it doesn't matter. Because doing that is better than him binging continuously, right? So that would be the, that would be my my kind of my, my my course of action from here. But first, get him on a quick call and see where his head's at. Right, my guys and girls, that is the Q&A wrapped up. Very good questions and definitely a lot of value added to the team covering these. So I think anyone that has got any interest in really trying to give back to the clients, I think Q&As and certain topics do need to be covered. And as a coach, I don't think it's just your job to give replies. As a coach, it is your job to actually coach your athletes. And I think a big part of the coaching process is definitely trying to educate them as much as possible where you can and answering the questions and giving them the reasonings behind everything that you do. That's just my take on that though. Now, I've been wrapped up now. I'm going to go and take a little nap and then I'm going to show you the pre-workout meal. So let's get it. Leg day today. You'll get to see some highlights. Let's get it. Here we go. Pre-workout meal. So we've got 110 grams of cream of rice. We've got the custard here with 40 grams of raw weight rice added onto this. So what I generally do is I get my cream of rice ready the night before, I have my rice ready in the morning, and I add my rice into this because one, 
it creates better texture too. It then isn't too sweet. Um, I like being sweet, but not over the top. Now, I've put 20 grams of banana ISO Pro in there, and then we've got the caramel biscuit on top, uh, 30 grams made into a poe paste. We've got 100 grams of banana, um, 20 grams of blueberries, and 100 grams of pineapple. Um, so that is my pure cat meal. We've got Meg's pure cat meal, which is rice, cod, and 10 grams of sweet pappy sauce. Um, we've got salt added on top as well. So we generally eat this and we'll train about 60 minutes after eating this as well. Um, so time for some YouTube, sit down, enjoy this meal, and then time for gym. Big leg day going down. Mm. The texture of this is incredible. Actual rice, income of rice, turns it into more, more like a rice pudding. So it's actually really, really nice, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and for me, especially now, food is getting a little bit higher. Putting just normal rice and micro rice actually makes it less volume. So I've got less volume of stomach before training, which is a win-win. So a lot of carbohydrates for very little volume for me. Leg day going down today, so we are going to go through the session before we actually get into the gym. Now, today will be the first session of my slightly adjusted setup where I've actually pulled back on the volume a little bit across each session. Um, only a couple of sets here and there, uh, which isn't really significant, but the adjustments I have made with less exercises will definitely make the session shorter and waste, well, waste, <laughs> leave out some of the wasted volume that you actually have to do with the warm up sets. So today's session will be four sets of hamstring curls, two sets of leg extensions, two sets of hack squat, two sets of leg press, one set of RDLs, and one set of split squat followed by two sets of calf press. Now, that session gives me all the volume I need, but it is just enough exercises to tick off all the boxes that I need having some unilateral work done there, uh, having some specificity for my glutes with the split squat and RDLs, but also more volume for my hamstrings, uh, which is crucial. Um, having five sets of total working sets for hamstrings and six sets of quads uh, directly, which is perfect. And I would always say that split squat ties in both quad and glutes, uh, which is a perfect exercise for me at the moment. So this sort of exercise selection and sessions layout is absolutely perfect for me. And I will definitely go over more sessions in detail. So keep a lookout as this session will actually be documented in full on YouTube very soon. But for now, we're going to get stuck in. We're going to get the session done and definitely hit some PBs because this week we are feeling good. I uh, got a little bit of infection last week, so definitely did not feel myself for a couple of weeks until I actually passed. I had to have antibiotics, which shifted it. So for two weeks, I was quite inflamed. My energy wasn't the best. I wasn't feeling myself in general. Whereas this week, since I've actually shifted the infection, it's been such a massive turnaround with my sleep, my resting heart rate, general recovery has been incredible. And it definitely showed in the last few sessions that I've had this week since my extended deload. Uh, pictures are looking pretty okay today. Um, a little bit bloated still from, uh, from antibiotics, but other than that, it's, it's definitely uh, an okay look, all things considering, and it's only gonna get better now. So we're gonna get into the gym now, get stuck into the session, and show you some highlights. So let's get it. Right, so as soon as I get in the gym, I actually pop behind the counter and I do two sets of planks. A minute and 10 second hold, now, Planks will definitely improve your bracing and strengthen your TVA, which is extremely important for bodybuilders who are looking to keep the waist tight. Now, for my leg day, the drills that I do are very simple. Uh, two sets of split squat, 10 reps on each leg, and a set of 20 rep walking lunges. Uh, that's pretty much all I need uh, to get me going and get me warmed up, so to speak, and really open up my hips and 
get myself deep into the end ranges and into positions that I will be getting into when I'm squatting, uh, which is huge. So let's get it. Four sets of seated hamstring curl, two sets of leg extension, two sets of hack, two leg press, one RDL, one split squat, two calves. So 14 sets all in all, um, 12 sets. I don't want really to count calves as volume. Uh, so 12 working sets for legs, which is maximum to what I can really recover from. And with that, I always have to keep myself in check with how hard I actually go. If I really, really send it hard, volume would have to come down. So no force reps, no reps past failure, just clean repetitions, taking it there. Let's get it. All right, here we go, set number one. Now, the best thing that you can do and use is a seat belt on a seated hamstring curl. So a lot of your hips down and in. It's an amazing tool to create more stability, prevent your lower back doing the work. More stability for your pelvis, more tension for the hamstring. Oish. Right.
Whoa. Hi right, guys. So, as I mentioned, warm-up sets. The way I like to build my warm-up sets is very, very simple. I like to waste as little energy as possible whilst building up to my maximum working weight. So for example, today on the hack spot, I did two plates for 10 reps. Then I did three plates for a triple. Then I did four plates for a single. And then I went into my working sets for four and a half plates for 10. So this way, I'm giving myself the warm-up sets and preparation that I need for the set without driving any extra unnecessary fatigue that may limit my ability to put my all-out effort into the sets that really matter. Because if I was just to waste energy with sets that are not really anywhere near to what I can handle and tolerate at my maximum capacity, it's just wasting stimulus. It's not really going to lead to the best of outcomes and it's not really going to create any more tension in comparison to really attacking the sets that I've got within my program. So be smart with your warm up sets. Now, session wrapped up, time to eat my post workout meal. When I get home, I will break down all the macros for each meal for you. Um, this is 400 grams of prawns, 30 grams of kimchi, 150 grams of cream of rice, and 100 grams of strawberries, and 10 grams of uh, sauce added. Right, that's session wrapped up, home time. I had a lot of sunbed as well. Um, only a few minutes, but definitely does a job now. If you are struggling with your vitamin D3 levels, one thing that will help is short sessions and sunbed. Uh, that is definitely something that will help with the uptake of your vitamin D3 and K2, especially in the UK. We don't get much sunlight, so utilizing sunbeds in very, very short bouts can actually be very beneficial. Um, so just a little bit of a, a little bit of a free tip for you all. Uh, a very good session today. I actually progressed all the lifts. Uh, some lifts with more load and almost matching reps. Uh, some lifts I stuck with the same load and actually progressed the reps and effort. Uh, so my seated hamstring curl, I actually did the same load but increased the reps and I did not have to kill myself to actually get it done. I still managed to keep the reps clean uh, with no reps past failure. Now on the hack squat, um, I increased the load and almost matched the reps. Uh, leg extension, same again, increased load significantly and almost matched the reps. Uh, leg press stuck to the same load, uh, but actually increased uh, repetitions on both sets and actually went a little bit deeper. Uh, as last time I wanted to make the reps a little bit tidier in the stretch uh, and make them a little bit deeper and definitely success today. So super, super happy. Connection and the pump was ridiculous. I needed to uh, take extra time in between my sets just to let my legs um, calm down a little bit before I could actually get into the set because it was blowing. Uh, RDLs, I went up by two kilos, uh, improved execution and control, um, but I was one rep down. So that's still a progression in my books. Uh, split squat, two kilos up and one rep up which is huge, uh, calf work progressed as well. So very successful session. Now, home time, I'm going to have a red hot bath, sweat it out, get uh, get clean, get cleaned up, and then it's meal five time. After meal five, I might even put the recovery boots on and chill for the evening. Um, generally on the way home now, uh, we get stuck into client replies. That's why I don't set off straight away uh, to, to go home. I reply to any clients that need replying to, then I will drive home, do some extra work. Um, and I am to always, always finish everything by around half past six, if possible. Well, that's where clients competing. Um, and then that gives us an hour and a half away from his phones, chilling, having downtime, and being able to relax. So, home time. Anything uh, from Smeg? I'm ready to go home. Yeah, she's ready to go home now, so we're gonna have to go. Sorry. Well, we almost missed meal five. We've got 125 grams of wild salmon, 125 grams of chicken, 50 grams of rice, 50 grams of pineapple, and 100 grams of mixed veg. We've got asparagus, mushroom, peppers, 
spinach, a little bit of lettuce, all mixed in a pan with a little bit of sauce and salt. So that is meal number five. Almost missed it, so I do apologize. I am hungry and for sure need a little bit of a break and a rest after legs. So I'm gonna eat this, watch some YouTube, chill. And Meg's got her prawns and rice there. Right guys, good evening. This is the last meal of the day. And here we have caramel biscuit as a pro, 30 grams, 300 grams of fat free yogurt, 100 grams of strawberries, 100 grams of blueberries, 25 grams of avocado, and 10 grams of almond butter, some underneath, and 75 grams of cream of rice. Now, I have just switched my oats to cream of rice because the fiber amount just needs to be reduced down a little bit, as I'm taking about 40 grams a day, which is more than enough. So, just need to keep air on the side of caution with that as food comes up and keep digestibility to a point. So, this is the last meal. This is my pre bed tiramisu. And I will go over all the macros for you in the morning and break down the macros for each meal. So, guys, good night and I will see you tomorrow. Right, my guys. So, as promised, I'm going to show you my macros for my full day of eating. So, meal number one is 75 grams of protein, 104 grams of carbohydrates, 15 grams of fats, 875 calories. Meal number two, 70 grams of protein, 104 grams of carbs, 3.8 fat, 730 calories. Pre-workout meal, 61 protein, 147 carb, 3.6 fat, 865 calories. Intro workout, 185 calories. Then we've got post-workout meal, which is 75 protein, 125 carb, four fat, and that's 850 calories. Meal five, 65 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, 6.5 grams of fat, 496 calories. And then final meal is 70 protein, 87 carb, 12 grams of fat, 732 calories to finish off on. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the full day of vlogging. Um, that's pretty much how the current setup is looking. Now, the total macros for the day are 4,782 calories, 424 grams of protein, 649 carb, and 55 fats. Now, that is counting all the macros from everything. So, the protein amount is high on paper because a lot of it is from indirect protein sources. Um, the same with the fat, it's relatively low uh, because I do include all the macros from all foods, um, as everyone should, because again, it's all calories, right? Um, so guys, hope you like the video. Please subscribe, like, support the channel, and peace out.